What's up, Fantasy League enjoyers? How are we doing? Hopefully, your Dallas group stage went well. I got top 12%. It's probably my best turn in for quite some time after a pretty, uh, let's say, rocky few performances. We finally tasted that top 20, top 15% again. Um, Stewie kind of brought the team down, though, if I'm being completely honest. And some of that's down to me putting a leader on him. Didn't really work out as I was expecting or hoping. The rest of the team, though, did well. Even though Mouse got knocked out, which was quite surprising, I'm very glad I didn't stack two players on Mouse. And I went through my reasons as to why that was the case in my last video. It proved to be the correct decision. Exertion, even though he got knocked out, still bagged me 44 points. So we take that, still having a decent individual performance. Chopper, really impressive performance from him. Rain, he's just so consistent. He's so dependable. And then Flamesy started well but dropped a couple of howlers, a couple of really bad performances, individually speaking, um, with Vitality squeaking through to the playoffs. I was actually quite disappointed with Flamesy's performance overall, but mainly it was Stewie bringing me down here with minus eight points. It could have been a hell of a lot worse, but we'll get back into that in a moment. So where that puts me overall is actually I'm still in ninth position. Um, a couple of people like Frey has had a, a complete tear. I think that she's managed to post up two top 10 percentage. Yeah, in a row. So kind of came out of nowhere, just getting tons and tons of points and leapfrogging all the way up um, the leaderboard here. So I'm in ninth, but I'm only one point behind joint seventh, which is Blair and Freya. And then Nart's five points away from me in sixth position. Nero is 20 points away from me, though. There is quite a big gap between fifth and sixth. And so although there are a, a few games remaining, I think there's like three or four games, um, tournaments, I should say, that are remaining here. I think my prospects of getting top five are pretty small at this stage. I'm going to have to have a couple of absolute bangers um, back to back, it feels like, if I want any chance at those top five spots. We'll do our best, though. We'll hang in there. We'll tough out and we'll see what happens. So coming through into Dallas playoffs, it is a bit of a strange one. It's a bit of a wacky one. If we're being completely honest, I don't think many people expected that 9Z would not only beat Mouse in their first game, but would then go on to beat Liquid and Vitality 2-0 to secure a spot in the semifinals. I don't think many people had that on their bingo cards. Um, and on top of that, that Mouse would crash and burn and be knocked out. They got knocked into the lower brackets by 9Z. They then got knocked out of the entire tournament by G2 and uh, just look like a shadow of their former selves. Their run has come to an end. G2, speaking of which, I did touch on this just before with the whole Stewie uh, situation. If we're being honest, they probably shouldn't be here in the playoffs. Liquid choked huge amounts against um g2 who themselves were missing tons of smokes outside on nuke but liquid couldn't punish them and therefore g2 made the comeback and ended up securing nuke to win the third map um and catapult their way through here i think liquid will be kicking themselves really should have won that game uh i think like the whole stewie 2k thing like he had a, a couple of big rounds especially in ancient against liquid uh, some standout moments with the mp9 in particular i think his fairy tale has already come to a close though i can't see how g2 beat phase they did look a bit shaky they looked a bit rocky to get through to this position but considering that their one loss was to spirit who are probably the favorites to take this entire tournament now especially uh, in a 2-0 pretty close uh, series it was the classic phase you know struggle in the group stage typically warm up and get strong when it comes to the playoffs i cannot see how g2 beat phase like even if the crowd is going to be completely behind stewie and, and hoping that the na sort of talent prevails this isn't stewie from like 2017 this isn't the the sort of peak stewie 2k um he was struggling for large parts in the group stage and i don't see even with a crowd behind them how they can get this done now i've been proven wrong many times in the past and maybe that is going to be the determining factor but sometimes the home field advantage can work against you and let's remember as well that this is without hooksy who gets a lot of flack and i think undeservedly so they don't have their standard igl in play and i think against a team like phase you're going to get found out um, and you're going to get found out hard. So I, I expect FaZe to win this game. 9Z in the semifinals, really impressive to get to this point. Take nothing away from them at all. Like beating Mouse, Liquid, and Vitality to secure your spot here. This is as legit a run as you could ask for at probably the most stacked IEM Dallas of all time. That itself is an amazing accomplishment 
but they've never been in a position like this before. They've never been in the spotlight this hard, expectancy rising. They were kind of the underdogs in all those previous games. The pressure was off, and now they're going to be in front of a huge, very raucous, very loud crowd, especially if G2 beat FaZe. Um, the entire audience will be against them. I think this is where 9Z crumble a little bit. I think this is where, now that some teams have had more chance to have a look at their demos and go over what happened in the previous games, I think this is also where some teams are going to start to anti-strat and 9Z just that little bit more. I don't see them winning the semi-finals. Then again, I didn't see them winning any of their previous games and they proved me wrong time after time after time, so well played. I expect FaZe to make the grand finals here. On the other side of the bracket, Vitality and Heroic, I think that's pretty straightforward. I will say Vitality did not look like a Vitality that we'd expect. They narrowly got a win against Monty, who is going through sort of a transitional phase right now with their roster Stiko obviously in. Very recently, Haji's playing with them as well as kind of like a stand-in try list. To, to win in OT and the nature in how they won that game did not fill me with confidence at all. They then smashed G2, fair enough. Pretty straightforward. I think it was like 13-6, 13-8 or something like that. And then they get beat by a 9Z in the upper finals. And that was another huge shock for me where some key players like Flamesy just went missing. And this Vitality just looks like it's a little bit lackluster to me right now. But even with those things being said... I still expect them to beat Heroic, who obviously Dexter was unable to get his visa issue sorted out as far as I'm aware, at least. And then Nikodos has come back in off the bench to play with the team in the shop window. All those classic cliches and caveats aside, I still think Vitality have too much for Heroic here to deal with. And it could very well be the Zaiwu show. That being said, Zyru's had his problems when it comes to playoffs in the past, and so we'll see if that comes back to haunt Vitality or not. Either way, though, I don't think Spirit loses to either Vitality or Heroic. How good Spirit looked against FaZe, how they've looked throughout this entire tournament, and the fact that a lot of the other pieces have been very shaky in the process. So I think this is going to be a FaZe Spirit Finals, a rematch of the Upper Finals in Group B, and I think it's probably going to go the same way. I think Spirit probably beat FaZe again, to win the entire tournament that is my expectations coming into this and therefore my team is going to be as follows now this was actually one of the hardest choices for me personally out of all the fantasy league games so far this season because the prices on so many of these players was very very odd and so the the cheapest player was stewie 2k at one hundred eighty thousand dollars and then you had like butter was 184k kickson was like 186 there was a lot of players around that mark um carrigan was 183 it was really strange pricing and i was finding it difficult to find a team that i was happy with throughout the entire five I, I couldn't find one this is the closest thing so i've pretty much just gone all in on spirit to win the whole thing right so i've gone for zontix who had a fantastic group stage it's actually his top rating in the last six or so months i think the last time he played at a rating of that caliber was back at like the thunder pick tournament and although the sample size was small it was only five maps that they played in the group stage zontix had a really really powerful performance as did shiro they were both looking incredibly good i was thinking you're going for like chopper and shiro but the way the price was working out is it didn't really make much difference because there's this weird ground in this current um playoff stage where unless you have over like 202 203k you're not really looking at any great players like rain was 199k there's no one else really around that kind of level in teams that i expect to do well in this playoffs that could justify me like dropping down to chopper instead of zontix and therefore i just kind of like made do with this i think phase will make it through to the finals and I was happy enough to go for two of their players because I think if they beat G2 fairly convincingly, they beat 9Z fairly decently, I can see Rain and Carrigan accruing quite a few points. But this team is mainly about the finals. It's mainly about Spirit winning the whole thing. And Shiro and Zontix in particular, I've been looking at throughout these five maps. I'm very impressed with them. But there is one caveat with that as well. Similar to what I said about Zaiwu in playoffs sometimes, you could say the same for Zontix. Like this guy, apart from Katowice, where he was very strong in kind of their first outing at a, a big crowd in a playoff arena, since then he's not really shown up when it comes to the playoffs. And this has been a consistent theme. So he is a bit of a gamble, but I'm very happy with having Shiro there, who feels like more of a, a stable pick for points. I expect that Spirit are going to get this one done. 
My only other concern really was about finding that budget player for around 185k, and that's where Butter come, came in. So again, for those of you that haven't played um, Fantasy League in HLTV before, the teams that are in the semi-finals, so three of my five, are guaranteed points because they're going to bypass the quarterfinals, and as a result of that, they kind of get like rewarded with a, a set amount of points. I believe if it's if it hasn't changed, each of these players, so Shiro, Zontix, and Buddha, will all get plus six points. So even coming into the first sort of like game, I'm going to have eighteen points guaranteed for me, like right off the bat. Um, this is just basically as a buffer because they get to pad their stats as they have a buy into the latter stages. So I felt like Butter was like a decent pick for that sort of price range. I could have gone for Kicksan instead because maybe Heroic can beat Vitality. But the other side of that is that if Vitality smash Heroic, I don't get the guarantee plus six points. Now, I would expect that 9Z are going to lose anyway to whether G2 or FaZe win. So I have to hope that Butter isn't going to have such a bad performance that he actually goes into the minuses. I hope that having a buffer of six points to start off with, bare minimum, he kind of comes out with it with zero. In which case, the budget pick was worth it, and I have no issues with that at all. It's more of like a like a safety net, as it were. So I... I'm pretty happy with Rain and Carrigan, honestly. Like, they're not two players that are going to go out there and just ball out of control and get me tons and tons of points necessarily. Um, but considering that the jump up from Rain to the nearest player was Rops, and that was a difference of nine thousand dollars, I didn't have the nine k surplus. And again, I wanted to to kind of pad more into um, Spirit. I could have dropped Zontix to Chopper and then upgraded Rain to Rops, but I was happier to actually just fully all in spirit because i think that they are going to win this fairly convincingly in the end whacking an eco friendly on carrigan you're going to get some points from this he's very aggressive in the eco rounds rain you know what i'm going to say about him in the headshot machine you always put the headshot machine on him his headshot percentage is out of control he's always going to get you points in that in that mark the one i wasn't sure about was zontix because originally i was going to put him on the the ct rating but his CT rating is not that sick, like when you consider how strong it is for some of these other players. Uh, 1.15 is not bad, but it's not necessarily like you have to pick him for CT rating. Plus, the current map pool, I think, is a little bit shaky in that regard. Like having Anubis in here, Dust 2 in here again, makes me a little bit nervous putting someone on CT rating. So I've gone for Multifragger. We'll see if that ends up working out or not. I'm hoping he has a really good playoffs here, and this is going to be my team. I was very close to going for the full gamble pick with this squad because I felt like I needed to go for gamble picks in order to catch up with the fifth position, as I just showed you before, there's a 20-point gap. But I'm going to try and pick and choose my battles on this one. If if the next tournament that comes along, which I believe is the Yala Compass tournament in like just about a week's time, if that is going to have like more friendly uh, budget, you know costs of players then i may very well go for a gamble pick when it comes to that event this one just I, I couldn't find a way to go for like a super gamble pick team i wanted to go for like vitality at one point i was looking going for zywu and spinks and then chopping in with a couple of like lower budget players but it was just too expensive i couldn't make it work and it just wasn't worth it for the risk so we're going to play this one a little bit more safe what's your team looking like comment below and let me know and i'll see you in the next video hopefully we can land a top 10 percent this time